Mark Sisson says calories in, calories out is outdated while describing calories in, calories out next on What The Fitness. What's up guys, it's Friday, so you know what time it is. It's time for What The Fitness. All right, so I got sent this video, Mark Sisson Primal. So Mark Sisson is, I believe, He's kind of like a paleo guy. Uh, he actually was sent to me years ago because I was back before you guys knew me as Lane the Influencer. I was doing my PhD in protein metabolism and this guy was talking about the importance of protein. And so people used to send it as we're in alignment, but so many of these protein guys end up going down the rabbit hole of low carb, carnivore, energy balance doesn't exist. And I, I have seen this video already. Hopefully I can provide uh, some context as to why I think Mark has a, a, a fundamental misunderstanding of energy balance. I cannot understand otherwise smart people still spouting these calories in calories out theory it's more complex than that it's more nuanced I okay it's more complex than calories in calories out just just for just for reference calories in is the amount of metabolizable energy that goes into your system calories out is the total amount of calories or energy that you expend on a daily basis. So it's more complicated than that. I would say you're better off looking at calories burned versus calories stored. You mean calories in, calories out. Calories stored, calories in, <laughs> calories burned, calories out. Okay. But maybe, the, maybe, there's, maybe there's more to it. Take in calories and you don't store them. Maybe it's because you burn them off thermogenically. Maybe also part of calories out accounts for thermogenesis and stuff. Part of calories out. It's because you literally crap them out because you have bad digestion. You might take in. Uh, okay, so crap them out because you have bad digestion. So the research shows that the variance in metabolizable energy between individuals is like less than five to 10%. It's a pretty small variance. And still that's part of the calories inside of the equation. We're talking about metabolizable energy. If you take in food like insoluble fiber that passes through you, you're not getting those calories. So they're not part of calories in. This is still calories in, calories out. Or you can put it on the calories outside if you just, you know, if you want to look at out that way. But I think metabolizable energy is referring to the calories in. Mark may have a misunderstanding of what calories in, calories out is because so far he's actually describing it. In 4,000 calories of roughage and sugar and some other stuff and not digest and not absorb those calories. So it- Wait, not digest and absorb sugar? I thought you guys said like sugar was the worst thing for obesity and like it, it's gonna cause you like, so weird. I don't, I don't, does not compute, does not compute. Um, you, you're gonna absorb sugar. Now roughage, insoluble fiber, yeah, a lot of that's non-digestible. Again, not part of calories in because it's not metabolizable. It isn't about the calories you take in, it's about the calories you actually store from having eaten. And then it's about the calories you burn. Once again, calories in versus calories out. You're describing the same thing. Calories in, calories out. We also don't acknowledge the fact that some things like protein aren't combustible. They, I mean, they're not combustible. Uh, it's absolutely combustible. You can oxidize protein just fine. You can oxidize amino acids. There's numerous mechanisms. This is why you have deaminases. This is why you have keto acid dehydrogenases. Like, yeah, you, you can, you can. Oh, by the way, if he's talking about the thermic effect of food, protein has a higher TEF than carbohydrate or fat, but that is also accounted for in calories out. TEF is part of calories out. Your total daily energy expenditure, your calories out, is your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, the cost of keeping the lights on, plus your physical activity, which includes purposeful and non-purposeful, which is neat and exercise, and TEF, which is the amount of energy it takes to extract and metabolize the energy in food. Now, TEF is actually the smallest component of those buckets, it's around five to 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. But him saying protein is not combustible, that is demonstrably false, absolutely false. They're combustible, but they're not intended to be burned. Mm -hmm. So you say, well, I had 120 grams of protein and that's 480 calories, but maybe your body's using 50 or 60 of those grams of protein to rebuild muscle, to, mm -hmm. to shore up bone tissue, to create enzymes. Yeah, and so the issue is, if the protein is being used for that, then something else is being used for energy. If the protein is not being used for that and it's being oxidized, it's being used 
for some energy. You're just switching between energy sources. It doesn't mean you're not still getting energy because it's not like your body stops its requirement for ATP when you're using protein that you ate to synthesize new body proteins. So it's gonna get it from carbohydrate or fat. Okay, you still have the same requirement. Now, if you overconsume protein, you're gonna oxidize more of it. And that's part of the thermic effect of protein. But guess what? If you're oxidizing protein, it means you're sparing carbohydrate or fat. Whether or not you end up storing those calories boils down to da da da, -da energy balance. And people do this argument with, with, with carbohydrates as well, because carbohydrate and protein are a little bit the same. You, you can't really store protein. So once you've reached the level of protein that's required for protein synthesis, for building these different body proteins, you, you then have to oxidize it. If you're oxidizing protein, or if you're oxidizing carbohydrate, that can spare dietary fat to be stored as fat. Now, an example of this is less than 2% and we know this from metabolic tracer studies, less than 2% of the fat you store in adipose tissue, in fat tissue, originates as carbohydrate. And very, 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 very little originates as dietary protein, almost like probably just a small amount. Over 98% of the fat that you store in body fat originates as dietary fat. Well, now how can this be? Because people, well, when you eat high carb, you block fat burning. Here's the way it works. If you eat a high carb, low fat diet. Yes, your fat burning drops, but you're also not storing much fat. So your body has to oxidize those carbohydrates, but since you're not eating as much dietary fat, you're not storing as much dietary fat. If you eat a high fat, low carb diet, well, then you're burning a lot of fat because you don't have a lot of carbohydrate available, but you're also storing a lot of fat. And so whether or not you gain or lose body fat will depend on whether or not you are consuming more overall calories than you burn. Every single excuse or reasoning he is making as to why calories in, calories out doesn't work shows that he doesn't understand calories in, calories out because every bucket he's talking about is literally accounted for in calories in versus calories out, energy balance. And so you would not want to ascribe a calorie to it. So why even- Sure you can. We, we know what the thermic effect of protein is. It's 20 to 30%. So for reference, if you eat 100 grams of protein, you will net out 70 or 80 calories. If you eat 100 calories from fat, you'll net out 97 to 100 calories because the thermic effect of food is zero to three percent. If you eat 100 calories from carbohydrate, you'll net out 90 to 95 because the TEF is five to 10 percent. No, we, we, we know what calorie amount to ascribe to it. And again, TEF is only about five to 10 percent of your daily total energy expenditure. And so even if you like double your protein intake, at best you're increasing your thermic effect of food by 100, maybe 200 calories. It's an effect, but it's not the massive effect that he's trying to describe here. And say that's a calorie coming in. You could make the case like, all right, so I'm gonna give you 2,500 calories of Skittles, and I'm gonna give you 2,500 calories of 120 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs in the form of green leafy vegetables, and then the balance in healthy fats. No, nobody's saying those are the same, bro. They're not the same macros. <laughs> Like you're like literally dealing with something that's all sugar or a balanced diet with sufficient protein and fiber. So we already talked about fiber, less metabolizable energy into the system, protein, more calories burned. So no, it's not the same thing, but energy balance, calories in, calories out, would not expect them to be the same thing because they differentially impact calories in and calories out and you continuing to say this trope just shows that you don't understand calories in, calories out, which is really kind of disturbing, to be honest. You're telling me that, that those are equal, those are the same. He didn't point out anything in there that is not accounted for in the calories in, calories out, energy balance equation. Most people, Mark included, don't understand it. They don't understand that your total daily energy expenditure encapsulates the thermic effect of food, encapsulates your non-exercise activity thermogenesis, encapsulates exercise, encapsulates your BMR. It also encapsulates, hey, some of the energy you eat, you don't metabolize, especially if you're eating a higher fiber diet. It's accounted for, all that stuff is accounted for. But people try to create these diet tropes because they're trying to evangelize you on their diet. And I know Mark is a primal, I think he's a 
calls it primal kitchen or whatever it is. So he's trying to get you to eat more protein, more fiber. Hey, all those are good things, but it's not because those things exist outside of calories in, calories out. It's just that they are more useful tools for managing calories in and calories out. So I hope Mark watches this video and has a better understanding of what calories in, calories out actually is.